Hey art teachers, I'm Laura Gardner, an elementary art teacher in Indiana. In our Art Room Hacks mini-series, we have three fellow art teachers bringing you innovative hacks for your classroom to run smoother and to make life just a little bit easier. In last episode, we talked all about grading hacks, so make sure you follow the link above to find that in the playlist. And in today's episode, we're talking about six medium and technique hacks. For more tips and tricks for art teachers by art teachers, make sure you like and subscribe to The Art of Ed for videos just like these. Let's get started. And today's technique hack is how to slip and score kids' clay projects without actually using slip. I use a plastic fork and a little cup of water, and that's all you need. So we don't need actual cups of slip and have a big mess at kids' tables. They don't have to have that much stuff out on their tables. And it goes really quick and easy, and it sticks in their mind the way I explain it to them. Like Velcro. In order for Velcro to stick, you need two pieces. So we need to make our clay like Velcro. So the two pieces you want to attach, we dip the fork in water, we scratch one piece, back and forth like tic-tac-toe, you dip your fork in water, scratch the other piece back and forth like tic-tac-toe, and then you have two pieces that are all textured like Velcro and you stick them together. And then if it wobbles or wiggles like a loose tooth, it's gonna fall out like a loose tooth. Maybe not today, maybe tomorrow, maybe when it's in the kiln. But if it doesn't wiggle like a loose tooth, you know that it's on there. The slip part, because the water with the clay turns into that slip and you don't actually have to have a cup of slip at their desk with them. So that's my hack for you today. And today's medium technique is watered down temper paint in spray bottles. So yes, you can have liquid watercolors, but I like doing this with temper paint. You can add more or less water depending on the opacity that you want and the transparency that you want. It's really easy to clean up and you can do it with the temper paint that you already have in your classroom. You don't have to buy anything extra. So I use one part paint, two parts water, mix it up in the bottle, and then you can just spray it. You can use stencils and spray on top of stencils. You can spray on top of objects that are easily cleaned off. You can spray over kids' hands and have their handprints left on their artwork. I do that for my cave painting. You could also do abstract expressionism and make it look like splatter painting without actually having the huge mess of splatter painting or graffiti art. And they could draw their words and things with something that will resist the water. I did oil pastels and then you could spray on top of it to make it look like the spray paint that you might see in graffiti. I'm Andrea Vildarzik, a middle school art teacher in San Diego, California. And today's medium and technique hack is to use a transparency sheet as a printing plate. So I like to attach my transparency to a messy mat. So I use a large piece of construction paper and I like to put a white piece of copy paper underneath of my transparency and then tape that down in four corners so the students can see their work really well. And then all you need beside that are a paintbrush, a couple of Q-tips, any other tools that you might be interested in for texture like sponges, toothbrushes, forks are great, combs. I use temper paint. A wet sponge is always nearby for cleanup, a couple pieces of white paper and a pencil. I love to just give everybody a Hershey Kiss sized amount of paint on their transparency. And then they just brush this on, being mindful that um, whatever texture they brush their temper paint on with is going to transfer to the final print and they can get really creative with that. And this is a messy mat for a reason. It catches the messes and then they take their handy Q-tip and we're using the subtractive method here to take some paint away. And I'll just quickly add an interesting leaf pattern. For this technique, I also highly suggest that um, students go for an all over pattern. It just always seems to be highly successful as far as it being aesthetically pleasing. 
And then as they get comfortable with this method, they can graduate on to um, trying to write numbers and letters backwards, since their work will be printed in reverse. And it's always a pretty satisfying technique. Uh, this is one of those art room techniques where everybody says, wow, at the end when um, I pull the print. So let's do that. I'm gonna write my name on my work before I print and before my tempera dries, and I'm going to just lay this down on top and wherever it lands, I let it stick. I don't pick it up and move it. And then I give it a gentle back rub, making sure to press down on all four corners, side to side, top to bottom and through the center. And one tip is that you can always keep your hand on your paper and peel up a corner to see how the transfer is going. Place it back down if you feel like you've missed a spot. And then when you're ready, pull up your print. And it's a great introduction to printmaking. And cleanup is great. Just take your damp sponge, wipe down the transparency, and then you can go ahead and begin again with the next print. And today's technique hack is to create pocket-sized pieces of handmade paper with easy to find materials. If you'd like to introduce students to the paper making process and don't have all of the fancy mold and decals traditionally used to make paper sheets, then this hack is for you. Uh, the simple supplies that you're going to need are a sturdy container, some window screening, which comes in big rolls for under $10. I'll put that in the link below a couple of rubber bands, cookie cutters, a sponge, paper pulp, and optionally a container and a funnel. And then I always have a piece of paper towel where I'm gonna lay my finished paper on. So let's get started to look at the process. Uh, you're gonna take a piece of window screening that's a bit bigger than your container. And I like to leave a lot of extra hanging off on one side. Secure this with the rubber bands. I always use two because sometimes one will pop off and then you want to pull the screen a little bit taut around it. Okay, the next step is to select one of your cookie cutters and put that right on top of the window screening. And this is the part where you may choose to pour from the blender or you might want to use your funnel and container to have a little bit more control. You're going to hold down your cookie cutter gently and just pour your pulp on top. These cookie cutters are about a half inch deep and I always tell my students to just fill them up with the pulp. And you can manipulate this a little bit until the whole thing is full and that your paper pulp is in every nook and cranny. And when you're satisfied, you're gonna hear the um, water dripping into the container. That's a great thing. That's keeping it off the table. And once you're satisfied that the pulp has filled the shape, you can gently lift this off and that is the beginning of our handmade paper. And here's where the extra screen comes in. I'm gonna take this, fold it over top of my paper and use my sponge to press out the excess water. And I like to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze and make sure all that excess water is out. This will speed up the drying process. And this is a good time to pull the screen taut again, very gently. And you'll see the edges of the paper are lifting up, so that makes it very easy to pick up and transfer. And there you have it. My pocket-sized handmade paper. Hi, I'm Matt Young, an art teacher from Columbus, Ohio. And today's technique hack is how to use simple box fans you can buy at any store in a donated ventilation shelf to create a drying rack for your clay to make it leather hard. Now, I don't know about you, but in the past, I used to use hair dryers. And I have a class of like 30 students. Obviously, I don't have 30 hair dryers, but I did have about four to six working at any point in time. And they were super loud. Not to mention the student had to sit back here and hair dry the project while they were basically kind of like not being able to do anything else. I came up with this idea of putting the box fans to be able to draw air through. So now the student, whether they're working at the wheel or working at the table, can come back here, sit their project on the shelves, 
and be able to go over to the table and still continue to work on other pieces and parts of their project. Not to mention, I'm not blowing any fuses with these box fans and they're whisper quiet. So with a couple simple box fans and a donated ventilated shelf, you have a drying rack that will dry your projects evenly in about 10 minutes. And today's technique tip is how to make paper slip. Now, you've never heard of paper slip before? Well, paper slip has been nothing but a wonderful, magical thing that students use to fix fired uh, bisqueware and the small cracks within them. Now, about 20 years ago, I came across this in a ceramics magazine for uh, potters that had small cracks within their pieces to be able to fix them without ruining the entire piece. And it's been super easy to use. Now, I will say you do need a few things to get started. Uh, you'll need a mixing cup because you want to mix this about a pint at a time. Uh, it does tend to get a little bit moldy if you keep it for too long, uh, but it's really easy to make. So you need a mixing cup for about a pint. You'll need about a cup and a half of vinegar. You will need some toilet paper and or some old paper towels. And of course, about, uh, you know, a cup of slip. What you're going to do is you're going to mix this wonderful elixir together, blend it, let it sit overnight, and then you will have a paste that is a consistency a little bit thicker than regular slip, almost fibrous. Uh, then you're going to want to paint it in the crack and, of course, fire it again uh, before the students glaze it. But this paper slip will allow all ceramics projects to be uh, fixed if they have a small hairline crack. And that is a wonderful tip for any of you that happen to teach ceramics or clay for students not having to remake their projects over and over again and do small fixes. Hey art teachers, that wraps up our six medium and technique hacks. If you have additional hacks you wanna share, make sure you use the comments section below and we'd love to keep the conversation rolling. Stay tuned for next episode where we're talking all about exhibiting and displaying artwork. For more tips and tricks for art teachers by art teachers, make sure that you like and subscribe to The Art of Ed and you'll get videos just like these. Thanks for watching. Bye.